The Kingdom of England, formed in 927 AD and evolved over the centuries. But what is the genetic history of England and what is the genetic makeup of its people today? Now the word England means the land of the Angles and it speaks to one major episode in the genetic history of the country. But there are many more, from the Romans to the Vikings. Let's start here though. This is Cheddar Man, a western hunter-gatherer who is Britain's oldest near-complete human skeleton and he lived around 10,000 years ago. He was found in Goff's Cave in Cheddar Gorge, Somerset, England in 1903 and he would have been a relatively early hunter-gatherer living in Britain following the last ice age, as large parts of Britain were uninhabitable during the last glacial maximum around 20,000 years ago, including parts of northern England. His mitochondrial DNA, which is inherited exclusively down the maternal line, belongs to haplogroup U5B1, with U5 still found in England today. His Y-DNA haplogroup was I2A2, which again is still found at low levels in England. It is estimated that many British people today share approximately 10% of their genetic ancestry with the hunter-gatherer population to which Cheddar Man belonged to, but there is a lot more to the story. I should note as well that around this time of western hunter-gatherers in ancient England, Britain was connected to continental Europe through a land bridge known as Dogger Land, which stretched across the North Sea but was swallowed up by the sea around 8,000 years ago. So after these initial western hunter-gatherers, the next major wave of migration was when the early European farmers that were originally from around Anatolia arrived in ancient England around 6,000 years ago. Now these early European farmers would have had darker eyes than western hunter-gatherers and they would have changed how the people of ancient England looked to a large degree. It wasn't too long after these early farmers arrived in ancient England and ancient Britain that another major wave of migration, a very profound wave of migration took place around 4,500 years ago when steppe ancestry was introduced into the land we call England today. Now the vector for this spread was probably the Bellbeaker Complex, a culture that was connected to the Yamnaya people of the Pontic Caspian Steppe. The Bellbeakers arose around 2800 BC in Iberia before expanding and they get their name from the shape of their pottery, drinking vessels in the shape of inverted bells. Now the Bellbeaker people potentially reintroduced genes associated with a significant reduction in skin and eye pigmentation with lighter skin, blue eyes and blonde hair probably becoming more common amongst the population of ancient England. They also could have introduced genes associated with lactose tolerance, as we know that the Yamnaya culture consumed milk, and this may have been one way they fueled their incredible expansion from around modern Ukraine. A study that used samples from the teeth of over 50 Bronze Age skeletons connected to the Yamnaya culture found that after 3300 BC, these people's teeth were full of cows, sheep and goat milk proteins, direct evidence that they were eating dairy products. So this step ancestry completely changed the genetic landscape of ancient England, and it was a lasting change as we'll see later in this video. One 2018 study published in Nature found that this high level of step related ancestry was associated with the replacement of approximately 90% of Britain's gene pool within a few hundred years. We know as well that the main Y-DNA haplogroup of the Bell Beakers was R1BM269, with RL151, another subclad of R1B, also relatively common amongst the Bell Beakers. On the maternal side, the most common mitochondrial haplogroup amongst the Bell Beakers was H, with UK, T and Jai also somewhat common. But there is much more to the story, however. We know that after the Bell Beakers, there was a large-scale migration into ancient England during the Late Bronze Age, which increased the level of early European farmer ancestry in ancient England, as a 2021 study published in Nature found. Between 1000 and 875 BC, early European farmer ancestry increased in southern Britain, i.e. in England and Wales, but not in northern Britain, i.e. in Scotland, due to the incorporation of migrants who arrived at this time and over previous centuries, and who were genetically most similar to ancient individuals from France. The authors went on to note that this migration contributed about half the ancestral people of England and Wales from the Iron Age, thereby creating a plausible vector for the spread of early Celtic languages into Britain. Now I should note that there is a bit of a debate within the literature about where the early Celtic languages originated from. Barry Cunliffe, for instance, argues that the early Celtic languages could have originated in Britain Island in the broader Atlantic zone as trading languages or lingua francas, whereas others argue that there was a movement from the continent that brought early Celtic languages with them. 
It is interesting to note when we look at the genetic studies and that genetic study we just looked at there, they basically showed there was a movement of people from continental Europe around the area, probably around ancient France. They moved into ancient England and ancient Britain in general before Celtic languages started being spoken. Uh, and they were potentially a vector for the spread of Celtic languages, um, although obviously there is, is other theories as well. Regardless of the precise origins, basically we know that the people, the ancient people of England, prior to the Roman invasion, were a Celtic people. The Celtic Britons that spoke common Brythonic. As far as haplogroups around this time, a 2016 study looked at the genomes of a number of ancient individuals from this period. One was a female from Linton in Cambridgeshire dated between 360 and 50 BC, and she belonged to the mitochondrial haplogroup H1E. A male from Hixton, also in Cambridgeshire, who lived between 160 BC and 26 AD, belonged to the mitochondrial haplogroup K1A1B1B and the Y-DNA haplogroup R1B1A2A1A2C, which is also known as RL21. With this haplogroup associated with the insular Celts in general, and it is still high in places such as Britain, Ireland and Brittany and France. The Romans soon arrived, however, with their invasion beginning in earnest in 43 AD. But what was the genetic impact of the Romans on ancient England? Well, a new study just published this year looked at this very question. But they again found a low genetic impact of the Roman occupation on Britain. And this is in line with various other studies. The reality is that the Romans left a very limited genetic impact on ancient England, although they left their mark in various other ways. Now, the next major wave of migration into ancient England had a profound effect on the genetics of the population, and some English people today can trace around 40% of their ancestry back to these people. They were, of course, the Anglo-Saxons. When groups of Angles and Saxons from around ancient Germany and Denmark migrated over to Britain beginning around the 5th century AD, a 2016 study estimated that on average, the contemporary East English population derives 38% of its ancestry from Anglo-Saxon migrations. This study added that these Anglo-Saxon samples are closely related to modern Dutch and Danish populations. The impact of the Anglo-Saxons was highest in East England though, and their influence varies in different parts of the country, with parts of Eastern, Central and Southern England deriving between 10 and 40% of their ancestry from the Anglo-Saxons, according to the people of the British Isles study. Now, a really interesting study published in Nature in 2022 that looked at the formation of the early English gene pool detailed this new influx of ancestry and how the haplogroups changed around this time. They analysed 460 medieval northwestern Europeans, including 278 individuals from England, mainly from the time period 450 to 850 AD. They confirmed that there was a substantial increase of continental northern European ancestry in early medieval England, which is closely related to the early medieval and present-day inhabitants of Germany and Denmark, implying large-scale substantial migration across the North Sea into Britain during the early Middle Ages. This change was also reflected when the study looked at haplogroups as well. They noted that before the Middle Ages, post-Neolithic individuals from Britain and Ireland carried overwhelmingly the major Y chromosomal haplogroup R1B P312, especially the subhaplogroup RL21. By contrast, the early medieval population of England exhibits a substantial fraction of continental-derived haplotypes belonging to haplogroups R1b U106, R1a M420, I2a1 L460, and I1 M253, which is also known as simply I1, which are commonly found in northern and central Europe. So we know that the Anglo-Saxons had a profound effect on the genetics of ancient England, but what about later migrations? What impact did the Vikings have on the genetics of ancient England, for instance? Well, I should note a problem up front. Basically, when it comes to looking at the genetic impact of the Vikings, particularly Vikings from Denmark, it's really hard to separate the data from Vikings from Denmark compared to Anglo-Saxons from Denmark, obviously the land we call Denmark today as basically they would have some shared genetic signals, like haplogroups that we're going to look at a wee bit later. Some studies have found no obvious genetic signature in England from the Danelaw period, for instance, yet a large signal from the Anglo-Saxons. Perhaps some of this ancestry labelled Anglo-Saxon may partly include the influence of Danish Vikings as well, but separating this data is extremely difficult, although we obviously know that the Anglo-Saxons had a significant genetic influence on England. 
Despite this caveat, it does seem that the Vikings had a small genetic impact on parts of England, with one estimate stating that the Viking Age genetic contribution does not exceed 6% in England. A connected people to the Vikings were the Normans, but what impact did the Normans have on the genetics of ancient England? Well, despite leaving a legacy on the language and the government of these lands, with the word government itself coming from the Normans, they seem to have little genetic impact outside of a small number of elite families who settled in Britain. In more recent history, there were other genetic influences on England. In the 17th century, for instance, there was a migration of groups of French Protestants known as Huguenots or Huguenots, who were fleeing from religious persecution in the Low Countries in France, and it is estimated that they numbered around 40 to 50,000 people. There has obviously also been many movements of people into England from Ireland, Scotland and Wales over the centuries, with the period of the British Empire and the Commonwealth adding some further genetic layers to England from across the globe. But what about the genetics of modern England? What haplogroups groups are the most common, and how did they speak to the historical migrations and invasions down through history that we've seen in this video? Well, as far as the Y-DNA haplogroups, the most common Y-DNA haplogroup in England today is R1B. With 67% of men belonging to R1B, according to one estimate, and this haplogroup was probably first introduced into ancient England through the Bell Beakers. It is associated with steppe ancestry, with further migrations compounding this as well. Another notable Y-DNA haplogroup found in England is I1, with around 14% of men belonging to this haplogroup, according to some estimates. As we saw earlier, the Anglo-Saxons were partly responsible for bringing this haplogroup into England, but this haplogroup was also common amongst the Vikings, so there may have been a few sources for this introduction. Other haplogroups found in England at lower levels include I2A1, I2A2, which Cheddarman belonged to, R1A, G, J2 as well as E1B. On the maternal side, the most common mitochondrial haplogroup is H, at around 44% of the population, with the subclads H1 and H3 the most common. This is pretty similar to other parts of Western Europe as well as Scandinavia. J is also somewhat common as well, at around 11.5% of the population, with this haplogroup found at small levels across many other parts of Europe as well as in the Middle East and North Africa. U5 is a little less common in England, but still notable at around 9.1%, with Cheddarman belonging to this haplogroup, with K also worth mentioning at around 7.8% of the population. Other mitochondrial haplogroups found in England include subclads of T, other subclads of U, as well as W. So as we've seen, England has a rich genetic history that speaks to many episodes in its history. But what is the genetic history of a land that the Saxons came from? Germany. To find out, please click here. Thanks for watching, please let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and if you have English ancestry, and I'll see you next time.